Hello Friday ketchup lovers. Please come in Luke, please come in cameraman. And we will start to listen and look at Katie Tunstall. Hello, hello again, Friday Ketchup Lovers. Thank you very much for uh, watching. And uh, today I have a very, very special guest, Emma Mulqueenie. Emma, hello, welcome to the Friday Ketchup. Thank you, lovely to be here. <laughs> hey Emma, we started with uh, looking at Katie Tunstall, the song Black Horse and a Cherry Tree, but it was not so much about the song, but the way it was built up. Can you explain? why you were, uh, you're getting goosebumps, right? We call it actually yeah. chicken skin in Dutch, you know? Goosebumps is chicken skin in Dutch. But uh, goosebumps from Katie Tunstall, explain to us. I do, so, um, so I just happened to be watching um, Jill Holland and then Katie Tunstall came on and she just started this song, right? And I remember just being rooted to the spot just watching her build the song and definitely honestly if you do anything today i definitely recommend that you go and watch this video from beginning to end of um of her on jules holland when she first does it and um, and just that kind of building of, of the music it just transfixed me and in terms of kind of musical moments of my life it was just the one that really sticks with me this this song can transport me you know to another time and i just love it so clever <laughs> So massively geeky. Wow, I love it. I love it to see your enthusiasm. And uh, I recognize the enthusiasm as the enthusiasm you have for Susan. So, uh, Emma, what do you do at Susan? Um, I'm chief of staff to Paul Devlin, who is the um, CCO. And I swear to God, I have the best job in the world. No, <laughs> no that's me. <laughs> that's me. Do you know what? I've been on so many. I've been on so many. <laughs> Um, calls recently where everybody's going, I've got the best job in Susan. No, I've got the best job. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I enjoy what I do because I get to be involved in kind of multiple programs on, on behalf of Paul, things that he thinks would be good for GCO, things that would be good for Susan. So I kind of get to be involved in lots of things, work with lots of incredibly brilliant people and in an open source company, which is which is something that 20 years ago, I never thought that something like SUSE would be this kind of big and this successful and this kind of solid. It's so nice. It's lovely. You feel like you're part of the future. Yeah, well, you are, because uh, we've been in contact about a, a new project that you are, are working on. And, and I know that some of that is not really uh, carved in stone and everywhere, but, but can you give us a little idea of uh, the, uh, well, the, the project that you like the most that you're working on at the moment? Sure. Well, it's sort of, I mean, the stuff that I'm working on at the moment, it's, it's interesting because it's all really come out of um, the fact that when we launched a digital sales hub in, in Amsterdam in, in Hoofdorp just before Christmas, um, and we'd kind of done all of the research based on kind of pre-COVID, you know, yeah. um, you know, the people's behaviour pre-COVID. Yeah. Amsterdam's a great place, you know, there's lots of um, companies there, there's lots of life, there's lots of activity, lots of movement of people. And, um, and what happened was that, you know, we kind of launched it right into the heart of the pandemic when really, you know, the borders were closed and we were this kind of, you know, open up company you know trying to attract this talent and that was kind of the first real sign i think that that things were kind of changing fundamentally and that we had you know we needed to kind of revise our recruitment and hiring yeah. strategy almost to kind of go okay what what is happening how can we attract the right people um to susan so we're, we're kind of looking at 
I mean, especially in GCO and in, in our kind of digital sales hub, but, you know, across the rest of it as well, how can we attract some of that kind of, you know, young, early career talent? You know, what can we do as an organization to make sure that these people, um, these young people kind of understand the culture and values of SUSE? Because I know, having worked with, you know, lots of, okay, well, you know, I, I, I call them 97ers, but kind of, you know, kids age kind of 97, uh, sorry, born, age 97, born in 1997 and, and, right. and yeah. thereafter. So the kind of millennials, Gen Z, Gen X, you know, yeah, really yeah. bright young things. And what, you know, what what that generation really kind of care about is, is much more than just the company's brand. It's much more its culture and it, its values. And I know that's a huge generalization, but... But it's more often <laughs> true than it isn't. And I think that a large proportion of kind of young, keen people would really love to kind of work at SUSE. But we haven't done necessarily a brilliant job at not marketing, but kind of telling mm -hmm. that age group about us. Right. Yeah. You know, we just we, we don't we haven't done any of that. So. So I think probably the most exciting thing that I'm working on at the moment is kind of, you know, how can we do that? How can we kind of bring yeah. the awareness of SUSE and what we stand for and what a wonderful company it is? How can we bring that to, to that generation so that they can come in and, and really kind of feel like their life is kind of fulfilled more than just having a job? Yeah, yeah. Well, I was at the barbecue yesterday, the first uh, company event thing is... Uh, so it was small groups, but it was really seeing uh, old colleagues again. And uh, shout out to Marijn for the best barbecue I've ever had. Um, oh, oh man, it's fantastic. Um, but there were also three uh, uh, people, uh, or even, even four, uh, who I've never met before. Uh, it was the first time I met them, and they all were in that uh, part of that digital sales hub in um, in Hoofdorp. And and I must say that the I I asked this question to them as well. How can we appeal more of you uh, of, of your group? And the the recommendation they gave to me is uh, uh, let us do the advertisement for you. So mouth to mouth uh, advertisement. If we love our job, we will tell our friends, and our friends are uh, most probably around the same age and the same. Uh, stage of their life so let them do the talking let them do the uh, the, the advertisement and then uh, another important element they mentioned is uh, give the, uh, the the possibility to grow within the company and 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 they because they're young they are quite often I would say impatient is a little bit it has a little bit of a negative tone but it's not that negative that I mean they, they just want to move so if they do something for one and a half, two years, they already want to move to, uh, to something else, to uh, either a, a career step in uh, going up or, or to the side. So that's the two recommendations I got. So I give them to you and the Friday Catch Up audience. <laughs> Yeah, no, thank you. That is, you know, that is great. You know, I think, I think that's, I think that's very wise. Definitely, um, you know, word of mouth is super important, right? So you know, let's let's kind of get get that out. And yeah, you know, career pathway because it's you forget, don't you, that as you're kind of old like us, you're not as old as me, but you know, kind of like, you know, that that you you kind of you you naturally learn how to kind of look at your career path to see where those opportunities yeah. might be to have those conversations with your boss or or with you know an employee group that you're a part of but when you're new to it i think it's a completely new world right and and so i think that's such a that's a very wise advice and and kind of, yeah and, and and making sure that that path is kind of lit for them rather than it's just there if you know where to go yeah. so kind of lighting yeah. that path be okay you see this is why i love my job because <laughs> you know every hour you can you know and, and you know someone will come up with a great suggestion and it, and it sheds a completely new light on the way that you might take a yeah uh, project so thank you well you're welcome uh, and and uh, uh, thank you to those uh, great uh, new uh, people it was really uh, awesome to to meet uh, this new energized uh, uh, colleagues of us and uh, another th a third uh, recommendation they actually had for us is uh, what they described but basically what they ask is the mentoring program 
Uh, mm -hmm. So we could also uh, maybe make it even more clear to them that we have a mentoring program and that they are uh, extremely welcome to look for a mentor, uh, maybe more senior, maybe uh, in a completely different department than where mm -hmm. they are, to find a mentor. Uh, so you can talk about, well, the football if you really want or about uh, whatever you talk about in a coffee machine or what you would uh, maybe if you have some challenges uh, personal or uh, or with colleagues or with manager that you should be able to um, discuss this without it having any influence on your uh, on your career yeah yeah so yeah so true I, I, and 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 yeah maybe, so maybe we just need to make more of an effort to to kind of be proactive about kind of bringing that mentoring yeah. program in yeah. rather than just assuming and you know that yeah we just we need to we need to we need to be better at that i think yeah but um a lot to improve but also i think if we look back at what happened uh in the last years with susan it's already uh done so many great things that um yeah even a big company as us we cannot build rome in one day right so we have accomplished quite a bit already and i think um, the 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 sea level uh, team you and 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 Paul and this can be really proud of what is accomplished already till uh, today. So compliments uh, there, and um, yeah, um, is there something that uh, the um, maybe your direct colleagues, maybe uh, people that know you, but they do not know that of you yet, that you want to share with the Friday Ketchup audience. And I didn't prepare this. This is really throwing Emma in front of the lines. This is definitely off the cuff. You better pray that I don't say something outrageous, right? Well, <laughs> we can edit it out. <laughs> uh, no, I, I, well, I think, um, yes, early, early in my career, very, very, very early in my career, I was, um, I was traveling around Australia oh, and I was yeah. doing odd jobs. And, um, and I spent some time as a Jillaroo, um, oh. rounding up brumbies in, in the desert. And my my kind of job that earned me money, because being a Jillaroo doesn't really, it just gives you accommodation. Yeah. I worked in a gold mine <gasps> and they taught me how to blow up the mountain to get to the gold. <laughs> so I, I got my explosive license, which, and I, was, I think I was about 19 years old. It's the most terrifying <laughs> All right, so you have an explosive license. <laughs> I do. Oh, wow. Okay, that's awesome. Well, um, I, I can say that I traveled through Australia as well after my uh, study. And uh, I also worked as a, uh, a, a jackaroo. Uh, yeah, jackaroo. Yeah, in, um, uh, oh, what's the name of the place? Uh, when you just said jackaroo, I knew what it was. Uh, Tamworth. I was in Tamworth. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, 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 Tamworth, and right. it was 1998. But I also got a, a de, uh, sort of a uh, diploma or a certificate there, because um, I went to drink uh, a beer in a bar in Melbourne after I worked at that uh, farm for a while, and I sat down and drink a beer, and I was sitting with somebody, and uh, he said, uh, "I really need uh, a new night manager for the hostel." So I asked him, "What do you need for that?" So he said, I need somebody who understands the uh, backpackers and who's able to conversate with them, but also maybe uh, has a little bit of uh, authority. And uh, th th that person needs to have a security license. So uh, I went the next day, uh, figure out what do you need to do to get a security license. So I got my security license because it was not that difficult. It was uh, not like a SUS technical exam. It was really a, a, uh, a quite simple multiple choice uh, thingy. And then I had my security uh, diploma and I was able to work in hostel, but not just that one in Melbourne. When I traveled around Australia, I was able to travel, work in all kinds of places with wow. that security license. <laughs> Wow, that is so cool. That would be so... I loved going around the backpackers. That would have been so cool. Yeah, oh, yeah, that was that, great. I love yeah. that story. Okay, so I think we can talk about uh, backpacking a lot more, but some of it is not uh, uh, for, for publishing. Oh. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to say goodbye. Uh, thank you very much, Friday Ketchup audience. If you like this video, please like, subscribe. But the thing I like the most is comments and questions. 
and you can do it either in YouTube or on LinkedIn or uh, well, any of the other platforms, by the way. So um, thanks for watching. Emma, thank you very, very much. It was really great uh, to have you in the Friday Catch-Up. We are going to listen to Katie Tunstall to see what she produced out of that pieces that she uh, got together. And um, uh, Friday Catch-Up audience, see you next week. Looking forward to it. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. And here we go. Woo -hoo.